Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. God is the source of good. I, I like to say it this way. If it's not good, then it's not God. Amen. 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 If there are bad things happening in your life, God's not behind it. Amen. God's not the author of it. Yes. Contrary to what religious tradition has told the body of Christ. He's not behind it. He didn't author it. And you don't have to accept it, praise Amen. God. Now, before we read first or third John, I want to ask a question this morning that I've asked this congregation many times in the past. And that question is this. How many of you truly want God's best in your life? Yeah. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I want God's best. I want God's best. And I'll not settle for anything less. <laughs> now, wouldn't you agree with me that this is exactly what God wants for us? Yes. His best. Right. Amen. I believe nothing pleases him more than when he sees you and I living in the fullness of his blessing. The apostle John understood this and by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote the verse that we are about to read and you're all familiar with it, but it begins in verse one, the elder unto the beloved or well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the brethren or love in the truth rather. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Notice it's important, I believe, that we recognize that this is written by an elder, an elder statesman. This is written by actually the only disciple, original disciple with the original 12 that is still living when he wrote this. He has walked with Jesus for many, many years. I think he knows the mind of the Lord. And I don't think that he would write something out of order that didn't agree with God's will. In fact, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So we know that John is receiving inspiration from the Holy Spirit. And if anybody knows the mind of God, it's the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? So notice here, he says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Above all things would imply that this is more important than anything else. Above all things, it's priority. Now, once again, we're reading from what we believe, according to Scripture, is the mind of the Lord. And God is saying to us that nothing is more important to him than that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Amen. Now, if that's important to him, why wouldn't it be important to us? That's right. Amen. Yet there are so many people in the body of Christ that don't believe this. Yeah. You know, some people are convinced and they've been lied to by religious tradition. That God loves poverty. I've heard it said, God and poverty are linked together with a short rope. That's simply not true. If God loved poverty so much, then why was Jesus made a curse for us? Amen? Why would Jesus be sent to the cross to pay the price for Adam's transgression so that we could be restored into God's best as Adam had lived before sin came. No, that's simply not true. God is not the author of poverty. And God is not the author of sickness and disease. The Bible says, I wish above all things, or I desire, as some other translations say, above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now notice he goes on to say, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So apparently living in prosperity 
and living in divine health, John considers it to be truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Now, if this was not truth, if this is not what God desires and it's not God's best for our life, then why would John, an apostle, a long-standing apostle, endeavor to perpetrate a lie? This is truth. Look at your neighbor and say, it is a truth. God wants you to prosper. And God wants you to live in health. Tell somebody else, it is a truth that God wants you to prosper and God wants you to live in health. The Passion Translation says, prospering in every way and continually enjoying good health. Amen. Prospering in every way, not just financially. Yes. Amen. Uh, a prosperous life and enjoying good health. And you don't have to choose between one or the other. You can have them both. Yes. Amen. Yes. You can have them both. Yes. Prosperity and good health. So we say from what we're reading here that prosperity and health are God's best for each and every one of us. And notice once again, he refers to prosperity and health as walking in truth. So don't ever let anybody convince you that God doesn't want you to prosper, that God doesn't want you to live in health. That's just simply not true. Now, the Bible tells us in James chapter 1 and verse 17, that every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father above. Consider prosperity and health as a good and perfect gift. And notice where it originates, from the Father above. Good health comes from God. Prosperity comes from God. Can you say amen? amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm liking this already. Amen. Look at prosperity and good health as a gift from God. A gift from God. And when somebody offers you the gift, how do you receive it? Reach out and receive it. <laughs> Amen. Say it. Thank you. I take that. Amen. I was preaching with Brother Copeland here recently in a meeting up in Sacramento, California. And after the service, a couple came up to me and said, Brother Jerry, we've followed your ministry for years and years. We love your ministry, and, and uh, we just want to be a blessing to you today. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I didn't say, I don't deserve it. <laughs> you know, I'm not worthy. They said, my ministry has been a blessing to them for many years, and we just want to bless you today. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And before they ever did what they were going to do, I said, I receive it. And then he said, I'm an executive, or I work with a Cheesecake Factory. And I know you and your wife like Cheesecake Factory. So here's a gift. And he gave me a stack this high of free Cheesecake Factory gift cards. Yeah. Amen. I received them. I brought to use many of them. I gave Richard some of them. Hallelujah. Did you receive them? Did you receive them? Absolutely. All right. Praise God. <laughs> and then not too long after that, I was preaching Brother Copeland again, and this couple showed up again. And they said, Brother Jerry, have you used all those gift cards yet? I said, no, not yet. They said, well, we, don't, we want to make sure you don't run out. So here's another stack of them. <laughs> I received them. Amen. 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 I'm looking for cheesecake factories all over the nation. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I know where many of them are. Amen. When God is offering you a gift, don't fuss about it. Don't fuss with it. Receive it. Now I learned this from Richard Roberts' daddy, Oral Roberts. Many times when I had the privilege of being with him, <clears throat> And when he and Evelyn would come stay in our home, Carolyn and I would always like to take them to lunch somewhere, a nice place, you know. And then uh, many times I'd say to Brother Roberts, 
Uh, Brother Roberts, uh, if you don't mind, if you have time today, I'd like to buy you a new suit. And he always responded the same way. If you insist. <laughs> if you insist. I've learned to say that when people say, uh, Brother Joe, I'd like to bless you. If you insist. <laughs> Brother Joe, I'd like to give you this. If you insist. Amen. Amen. I didn't ask them for it. They was offering it as a gift. Yes. God is offering to you because he loves you, yes. prosperity, and good health. Yes. You missed a wonderful opportunity to say, if you insist. Yes. Amen. Lift your hands and say, Lord, if you insist, yes. then I receive it. I receive and give him praise in advance for it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, just ask the poor man, is poverty good? Ask the sick man, is sickness and poor health good? I don't care what they know about the Bible or what they don't know about the Bible. If they're honest, they will immediately tell you, no, being poor is not good. And not having good health is not good. Amen? Amen. So every good gift comes from above. Psalm 119, verse 68, we've shared this verse with you in times past. It says, speaking of God, thou art good and you doest good, or you do good. The message translation says, you are good and you're the source of good. God is the source of good. I, I like to say it this way, if it's not good, then it's not God. Amen. 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 If there are bad things happening in your life, God's not behind it. Amen. God's not the author of it. Yes. Contrary to what religious tradition has told the body of Christ. Right. He's not behind it. He didn't author it. Yes. And you don't have to accept it. Praise amen. God. Amen. <clears throat> Can you say amen? amen? You are good and you are the source of good. The word source means where something begins or where it originates. So good things originate from God. Way back in the first chapter of the book of Genesis, when God was creating the earth and everything in it, many times you will find after he created something, it will say, and it was good. And he'll create something else and it was good. And he'll create something else and it was good. Amen. When he created Adam, it was good. When he created Eve, it was good. The only thing that was bad was before he created Eve. He said, it's not good that man should be alone. And I want to repeat that for people that are watching. It's not good for man to be alone. I will create for him a helpmate. And Adam called her a woman. A woman. Now I'd say it's not good for a man and a man. <laughs> In the beginning, God didn't create Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. I'm sure I'll get some ugly letters, but I'm going to tell you in advance, I'm not going to read them. So I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Amen. Everything God creates is good. Well, I've already got into this. I might as well keep on. I'm thinking about starting a campaign. I'm going to print T-shirts. I'm going to print uh, bookmarks. And I'm just going to simply call it, we were here first. <laughs> All that other stuff didn't happen until sin came. Amen. Okay, I better move on. 
Once again, the Bible says God is good and he is the source of good. Now, this is what Solomon was referring to when he wrote in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. What is Solomon saying? He is attributing the blessing of, uh, of the Lord to prosperity. When you have the blessing of the Lord on your life, it has the potential of making you rich. Rich is not a bad word. Learn to use it. Even if it sticks in your throat. Just keep at it and it'll come out. Rich. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Solomon is saying that rich comes from God and the blessing of God. Rich can be defined as having an abundant supply. If you have a hard time saying rich, just say, I have an abundant supply. <laughs> Amen. Solomon also wrote in Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, <clears throat> my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Notice Solomon not only attributed prosperity to God and the blessing of God, he's now attributing health right. to God Amen. and to his word. Notice God's word produces health. Amen. You could say it's the source of health. If you need healing in your body, go to the word. It's medicine to your flesh, another translation says. So here we find that Solomon is stating that prosperity and health comes from God. Amen. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them. Notice the word will bring healing to your body. And since prosperity and health are both from God and we are children of God, then it is our privilege to enjoy both amen. prosperity and health. Can you say amen? amen. And I'll drink to that. <laughs> First Timothy chapter six, verse 17 says, God giveth all things to enjoy. God gives us prosperity for our enjoyment. God gives us health for our enjoyment. Amen. What, what is having money and not having good health? You know, Aristotle Onassis was one of the richest men in the world. He could buy his own hospital and he could pay for the best doctors in the world. But all his money couldn't buy his health. So you say, well, uh, you know, I, I don't want prosperity, but I'd sure like to have good health. Why not have them both? They're gifts from God. And it's his best for your life. Can you say amen? amen. Now, in Luke chapter 4, go there with me, please. And I'm endeavoring to rush through this. Luke chapter 4. And notice... Jesus in the synagogue stands up and finds the place where it was written. And we know that he's quoting Isaiah. And notice it says in verse 18. Now let's back up to verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now get the picture of this. He, he doesn't have a Bible like this. It's a scroll. And he found the place. He turns the pages of that scroll. Now, traditionally, it was left open to what the rabbi 
would speak on next after what they had heard the previous week. But apparently Jesus turned to the place and found the place that it was written. And then he begins to read to them. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of them all in the synagogue were focused on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And notice verse 22. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. He said, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears today. They were somewhat shocked and they wondered about these gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. And one of the things that really shocked them was that he was identifying himself as the man that Isaiah was prophesying about. In other words, after he said that, he as much as said, I am he that Isaiah was speaking of. The one he was speaking of is in your midst today. Now that didn't sit well with them. In fact, they made him so mad, they took him outside and tried to push him off a cliff. But the Bible says he turned in the midst of them and just walked away. But notice what he said in these verses. If you, if you look at it closely, he is saying that I am anointed by God to preach prosperity to the poor. I'm anointed by God to preach healing to the sick. I'm anointed by God to heal not only broken hearts, but heal broken bodies. Then when he said, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, that's a reference to Leviticus chapter 25, which was known as the year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, all debts were canceled. Amen. 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 Somebody said, send us a Jubilee, praise God. <laughs> well, I have good news for you. Jesus is saying, Jubilee is no longer a period in time. Jubilee is now a person, and I am that person. Hallelujah. Amen. So notice right here at the beginning of his ministry, he makes it very clear that I am anointed by God to preach prosperity, and I'm anointed by God to preach healing. That's God's best for his people. Amen. And then in Acts chapter 10, go there with me very quickly. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, Peter makes this declaration, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. If you haven't highlighted that phrase, do so, underline it, mark it. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. If healing was not of God, then Jesus and God are in opposition. But the Bible says, while he was healing the sick, God was with him. God backed it. God ordained it. Why? Because it's his best for his people. Prosperity and health. I think you ought to give the Lord a good shout if you believe it, praise God. Amen. Now, did you catch the phrase healing all who were oppressed of the devil? Oppressed here implies burdened down psychologically, mentally, physically, 
and financially. Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed, burdened down psychologically, mentally, physically, and or financially. And notice also that by healing those who were experiencing this, then it was referred to as a manifestation of the goodness of God. Are you ready for more of God's goodness and favor? Begin expecting the God of more than enough to show himself strong on your behalf. Today's special offer, the Abundant Overflow Package, contains Jerry Savelle's three-part CD series, The Life of Faith, his new CD series, Hey, That's the Favor of God, and his inspiring book, Living God's Abundant Overflow. In this package, Jerry teaches how to operate in real Bible faith, how to press into God's promises, what a lifestyle of faith looks like, and why many don't experience God's favor. Don't limit God or hold back any longer. Discover how you can expand your faith and see God's abundant overflow in your life. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Abundant Overflow Special Package. Discover the practical information you need to lay hold of all God has for you. Order now and begin to receive more of God's goodness and favor. Thank you everyone for joining us today on Adventures in Faith. It's been a joy and it's been a blessing to be able to share the Word of God with you. And I'm believing that each and every time you watch our broadcast, that your faith is going to go to another level. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So I'm expecting your faith to go to another level and it's going to take you to victories over the world like you've never experienced before. We've been talking about living in God's abundant overflow. That's the title of my newest book. And I want to encourage you to get this in your home. And I know that the moment you begin to read it, you're not going to be able to put it down. It's such a powerful book. And then right along with it, The Life of Faith, three CDs talking about the life of faith. I've been living by faith for 52 years. I know a little bit about it. And I know that these messages will enable you to develop a strong, uncompromising faith. And then one of my newest series entitled, Hey, That's the Favor of God. The Lord told me years ago, every time you experience the favor of God, stop right then and say out loud, Hey, that's the favor of God. And if you'll do that, then you'll begin to expect it to show up in your life more and more. So if you'd like these resources, go to our website, jerrysavelle.org, or the information should be on your screen. Order them right away. And we look forward to sharing again with you next week on Adventures in Faith. And remember, until then, your faith will overcome the world.